Hi everyone, it's Ann and Doll, and today I've got a bazillion things to talk about. I've set up this little scene here. Here's a, maybe a fraction of my props and doll furniture. So a lot of my updates have to do with Milton here. As you can see, he looks very different, and I'm really happy with all of his changes that I've been focusing on this month. Unfortunately, all my plans to do updates and crafting for my big dolls have not happened because I've been so busy working on Milton plus other activities. And I've got Adley sitting here reading a book and here on the floor I've got a bunch of stuff I want to show you and talk about. And before we do that I'm going to uh, pick up the camera. So I'll briefly give you a short tour of this little scene that I've set up. So starting on the right, here you've got Adley. I've stood her up so we can see all the props. And today she's dressed in all of this pale pink clothing. I was gifted this Peter Pan collared blouse. It's sleeveless by Guleen, AKA Solid as a Rock, AKA Gabby. <laughs> thank you, Gabby, so much. I really love it. I, I don't think I got to thank her before for sending that to me, so I really wanna thank her for that. I'm also gonna show you some more gifts that she sent. Um, she sent me some more stuff in the mail, and I'll, I'll show you those little drawings. She, Adley's also wearing this R Rabbit top over the blouse, and she's got a magpie's floral skirt, the uh, magpie's secret floral skirt here, with some tights and some shoes from 99 Style. There's the violin case that I was given by Daniel Vita Plastica. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I'm going to feature that violin case in a story soon, and I'm really excited about that. Here's the skinny bookshelf with four shelves, and then this one is a non-working drawer at the bottom, and then this is a little wooden drawer set that I've put it on top of so that it has like the appropriate height. Because of course, um, everything has to be scaled to Milton and not Adley, so I wanted it to be a little bit taller than Milton here. At the very top shelf, we've got a little sword that's also a pen little goblet, a um, little vial of Scottish sea glass, a little Buddha. The Buddha is from Daniel Vita Plastica. Here I've got another Buddha figurine. Uh, my sister's boyfriend gave me that. There's a little astrolabe that I've made in silver, a painted elephant also given to me by Daniel Vita Plastica. Here's some books I've made, a stone owl figurine. Here at the very bottom is the three notebooks I've made. A triwizard cup uh, pendant or little charm and I was also given this Boba Fett plastic figure um, by Guling. I'm planning to paint that in sort of like a bronze gold so it looks like a small statue even though it's Star Wars I, I really love it a lot and here behind Milton is the conspiracy board there's Cranksy's hat hanging there at the back There's the carpet, here's the little ottoman I made in the Adley Summer Reading, which is The Tragedy of Hamlet by William Shakespeare. Here's Milton with his new face, if I can focus on that. I'll show you a close-up of his face and his new hair in a moment. Today he's wearing this sweater vest that um, I got for a really, really, really cheap price in a clothing lot that I bought off of Den of Angels. His typical white collared shirt, some black pants, dark brown shoes, and here I've set up his desk. Um, I'm still working on another desk, but that one's still a long way to go. Here's a cup of tea, a notebook that I made. There's the green pen that'll be featured in the first tutorial for the month of July. Here's the um, table accessories I made for his um, office supplies. I made those glasses here. I'll show you that. There you go, that's better. So it's got like a faux tortoiseshell look. I've got some gold details at the side. It's round and it has um, plastic in it. So that's uh, what I made for Milton. Okay, I have one of his filing folders, a telescope, radio. Um, and I believe the drawers are empty. 
Yeah, those are empty. So there's that little scene there. My first thing that I'll show you now, um, you've seen that I've gotten some really wonderful gifts from Ghouling in the past and I got that cute little Boba Fett plastic figurine. I have to show you these amazing drawings that Gabby did because I'm just absolutely in love with them. She drew my favorite, 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 favorite people in the world, my favorite fictional people in the world. Here's, here's Saren. Oh no, now we've got this ray of light. Hopefully, you can see the cute expression she gave him. I absolutely adore this. And here's Kane. So grumpy. And she drew all his tattoos and jewelry. And here's Lance. And Adley next to Adley. <laughs> and here's Milton. And she even drew his little pair of glasses. It's really extremely I'm so happy with these thank you so much Gabby and then not only that but she even drew me a little comic and that this has just been this was so unexpected like this was amazing 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 I actually have like so many things from Ghouling I, I should probably dedicate like a wing of a diorama once I build a real diorama I've got to call it the Ghouling solid as a rock diorama wing or something so oh but she also <laughs> where uh, she has sent me some um supplies to make things with which was amazing and she also sent me she handmade this guitar for kane which is black and it did not uh, break at all in the packaging when i received it it was it's really great i really love this so my instrument collection has grown because Gooling has sent me this. I'm extremely, extremely happy. So thankful. Thank you so much. Um, other updates, these crafting updates. I do not, like I said, I have not done the wig, but I've already flattened and straightened out all the yarn wefts. So these are all waiting to go, but I will not be doing a wig anytime soon because I'm going to focus on some other bits. But I will show you the wigs that I've sculpted this past month. Uh, I'll show you the very first one before I show you the final one. The first one I did is just this practice one that's white. I thought I could use white clay because I thought I could paint it, but it, I did try painting it and it wasn't so easy. You can see I painted it, it didn't turn out well, and I tried removing the paint and now it's got all these bits stuck in it. So when I sculpt a hard wig, I sculpt it directly onto the head because it acts as the head back for the for the head sculpt. So I, I remove the head cap on the back, and then I I mold uh, a, a clay a clay backing that will sit on it to replace that. And then I sculpt the sort of like strands of hair around it. Um, the problem is is that because the shape of a face, um, the shape of a face sort of does this with the chin going downwards, it's difficult for, for the most part, it's these sideburns. So I couldn't really use this because once I removed this off of Milton's head when it was done, uh, it's hard to put this on without almost breaking this. You can see it's uh, there's a part here that's almost coming apart. Uh, it's not impossible. This still does fit him, but it's just really you've got to wrestle it onto his head, and it's 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 dangerous because you might end up um, scratching his face while you're manhandling it vigorously. So this I had to put away, but um, it's good. It's a good reference, I think. The second one I made is really unfinished because it was just a really big um, test of ideas. So this one I actually used a different clay. I thought I was going to give Milton this caramel color, but I ended up not doing that. Um, this one is actually a test because it's different from the first one because it's a two-piece. I sculpted this this head the back this ba this backing head cap. See, so it looks like one with the two magnets, and that's the 
the empty concave portion that forms the, the inside. And then I put this layer of colored clay over it. And then there's another magnet here. So there's one, two, and then there's a third one right at the top. Because here I've got another magnet and they slide into place. But you can see because of that, I had to make the hair less textured compared to the first one. You can see it's got a lot less um, details and strand. It's a lot smoother. The problem with this, um, it, it does work pretty decently. Um, and if I could, I would have, before I baked it, I would have um, refined it and I think it would have been nice. But because of the lack of detail, it, it reminded me too much of um, those early, uh, the 1990s, those Ken dolls that I had with the the hair that was all smooth and it, he always looked weird to me even as a kid. I, I never really liked those uh, that hair. I mean, if you look at Ken dolls uh, from the Barbie line now, they make the hair a lot more detailed when they when they make their head molds. But back then, they were just so smooth. It kind of looked like he was wearing a helmet, and that's what this kind of reminds me of. Like if you look at the back, because it's so smooth and and the reason you have to make it smooth is so that the two pieces you know they this back here has to remain smooth so that it can slide on um, I didn't like the way that looked I mean I think I'll try this magnet this two-part magnet system another time I just I don't know I would like to sculpt more detail into it if I can f somehow do that make it look less cartoony that's what it reminds me it looks very two-dimensional without the detail Although I do like this method. Once again though, I the sideburns need to be shorter for it to fit over the head, so the sideburns also make it a little difficult. So that's my second one. And then I made my third one, which is the one I'm the happiest about. So now I'm gonna show you Milton with his new face up. So I've got Milton here with his new face, and this is the third wig that I made. I tried mixing some clay colors together to try to get this look. I had to do a few experiments and then bake it to see how it would turn out. So, but what I didn't realize when I made this test wig, I liked, I liked it, but there was no color in it. But I was very happy with how it looked and I couldn't describe exactly what it was, you know, aside from the, the actual sculpting, I liked the material. So if you look at this one, this is definitely opaque compared to this one. There's a slight translucency to it and I think the translucent sort of clay uh, is better suited to look as hair than something like this opaque one. So because of my, um, I, I couldn't end up painting this, I'm, I'm just not sure how to go about painting it. So I'm, I'm for now foregoing the option of painting after baking. So I, when I did add more pigments with the colored clay, it just didn't look right to me. So I wanted to retain a slight translucency but introduce a pigment into this look. So I did not even realize when I first sculpted this I was using translucent uh, Sculpey clay. I thought this was just regular white clay but I checked the packaging and I realized I had bought translucent clay which is this color and how it's how it looks after baking it. This is what I'm really happy with. So I started mixing in um, a bit of yellow and a bit of like warm oranges and warm yellows to get this sort of pale blonde look. It's still slightly translucent, but now it's got, you can see this is the white and there's like a little hint of pigment there. It's a lot more translucent here in the back because I gradually introduced more pigment as I sculpted it moving forward because, you know, you, you start sculpting from the back and then you start going to the front and then you can see the that color difference here. So like I said, the sculpted wig acts as the uh, the rear, the, the back of the head. This is the head cap now. So hopefully this works on camera. I've got my hands wrapped around the camera and I have no, had no problem before. So let's see here. Here's that it acts as the head cap at the back. Um, you can see, I'll show you side by side, 
I've significantly shortened the sideburns. Hopefully you can see that. I've shortened this portion here, the sideburn, because you don't want it to wrap around too completely. Um, it helps uh, make it easier to remove and put back on if you don't have the sideburns so long. That's why you can see here when I ended up doing Milton's face up, I ended up painting a little bit of the sideburns at the side. Um, there's no magnets at all on this because it is really sculpted to fit onto his head. It sits there ex very securely without the need for putting magnets. When I had done the second try, I hadn't introduced magnets here because for the two-part system, it needs magnets to be able to hold this piece. So you can see, put this here. That's the, <laughs> that's one portion and then you introduce the second one. Um, I, I won't put it on because I don't want it to scratch uh, the sideburns that I've painted. So that looks pretty, <laughs> that looks pretty strange. And then there's that third magnet that connects to this mag this magnet here. This magnet, I forgot, there's a second magnet at the very top right there. That connects to the magnet that's inside of the original Soldal Vidal Azrael head, the, the magnet that's that they have the company has placed right there. So when it sits there, there's two magnets securely holding onto this upper portion. So I'll take this off now. And we can put back his final leg. So yes, three iterations and I finally um, got to this one. I tried to put some of that unpigmented white translucent clay here at the front so it looked like he has some white hairs that are starting to come out right here and right there. And here you can see there's Milton's face up. I mentioned on Instagram that I'm using a, uh, a method with a cosmetic sponge to apply Liquitex matte varnish and I plan to do a video showing my face up process and by no means I'm not a professional face up artist at all um, my range of face up looks is very limited um, I'm just gonna share that for anyone that's interested so I'll be doing I, I believe Saren's face next month really quickly I might even just um, do a face up that's really playful something that's not permanent just to show you um, the different techniques that I use um, when I'm applying paint, when I'm sealing it in between layers and so on. So I am extremely happy with how he's turned out. He's got his doll bakery eyes, he's got his wig. Um, I even blushed his neck, but you can see here it's uh, because of my mod is so rough, you can see it's been chipped completely. I, I have this ledge that protrudes out and it uh, it's been completely rubbed off there, but in photos I just try to angle the camera so you don't see that. And then I also uh, blushed his hands so that they're pinker here, so in case I ever take photos of him with his hand close to his face, it matches the pigment on his face better. And that too, the neck and the hands, those are all sealed with that same sponged on method, and so far I've got uh, it's, all his clothing are, is clean, so I'm really happy with that because um, my next blushing plans are for Adley. She's got, you know, that long sole body that has, uh, her face is pinker than her neck and I want to blush the neck area and I also want to blush, oops, blush her wrist because you can see the color difference, it's very startling there. I haven't been able to put her in short sleeves as of yet because of that color difference, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to blushing these areas so I could put her in some nice summer outfits. But for now, she's she's covered up like this, which I, I don't mind at all. I've got here, I wanted to show you very briefly, one of the biggest inspirations for sculpting the wigs is definitely my Ringdoll K head. He's given me a lot of ideas moving forward um, now that I've made a good handful of sculpted wigs. I'd like to 
Um, I'm not sure if I could. Maybe in the future I would like to buy like a project head and focus on just making different sculpted wigs to test out. The thing that I want to do is try to mimic this. Um, you can see with Milton, because of the hairstyle I gave him, it's supposed to mimic uh, Leslie Howard's hairline. He has a tall forehead. His hairline starts all the way at the top here. Um, because of that, it's easier to sculpt because of the hair starts all the way at the top here. But what if I wanted to sculpt, let's say for example, I wanted to sculpt bangs. I would definitely probably need to do a two-piece system with magnets, but I would also need to probably, let's take off the hair again. So what I would need to do is probably mimic, for the actual head, mimic this shape by cutting off the top of the head. You see the typical head usually ends, the, that, that line where the head cap is placed ends all the way back here. But what if I can take like a junk head or something like a practice head and cut and carve out this similar shape. That way I can move the hairline closer to the front of the head. So not that I'm going to do it to Milton, but that would mean cutting off this top of his cranium here. I just, I think that would give me more options for creating different types of hairstyles. Uh, so I've just been, I don't know, like really studying this and I think it's it's a really good thing to have like a an example of a different way of putting on like hair. So this has really helped me a lot, having the Ringdahl case sculpt. So actually um, with the violin that I was given by Daniel, Vita Plastica, the storytelling has to focus on Sarge, and I'm really excited to share that. So I'll be planning on a storytelling video for Sarge. Um, I still need to do my character video for Cranksy. And here I want to show you the little container that I had all my pens in. It, it got too crowded, so I had to move all my pens here. So you can see now I've got all these different pens for my dolls. Um, I am planning on selling some of them in my Etsy shop once I open that up. It's very slow because I am a very slow person. <laughs> um, but definitely check out when I make the tutorial. I'll be uploading that July 4th, I believe. That's I think that's the first Tuesday in July. Um, and then there'll be another pen tutorial on the third... Is it the third? Yeah, the third week, the third Tuesday of July. There'll be a second pen tutorial video. Whoops, they're all falling there. Let me turn you around so we can briefly look at the Adley with Milton. So yeah, that's the updates for the most part. Let me check my list briefly. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was under 20 minutes because I've cut this up into like three or five different uh, sequences of video that I'll have to splice together. But um, yes. Those are my updates. Uh, it's been really great uh, making a video for you guys again, and uh, I'm going to go and edit that pen tutorial video so it's ready and waiting so I can share that with you all on July 4th. Thank you for everyone that's been uploading new videos. It's been making me extremely happy. Uh, it seems like the summer has definitely brought like everyone out to make new videos. Um, I'm really happy about that. Um, so I hope you all are doing well, um, and I'll see you guys in the tutorial video and hopefully some storytelling videos for next month. So I'll see you guys then. Bye!